The Xbox brand made one of the most questionable decisions ever over the weekend when it comes to Xbox Live Gold, and I definitely want to share my thoughts on it. And a Nintendo Switch developer says some very interesting things about the Nintendo Switch Pro that I also want to go over. Funny how that works out. What's going on guys, I'm RGT85, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome! Be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to like the video as well, but without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games. So over the weekend, the Xbox brand got a lot of publicity, but probably not the publicity that they necessarily wanted to get. Now, I'm a little bit late to this party, I was doing things like working on my Hitman 3 video for the Nintendo Switch, make sure you guys go check that out if you haven't yet, but I briefly want to talk about this Xbox Live Gold situation, just because I'm, I'm seeing a lot of weird things with it. I'm sure someone in the comment section will have a timestamp to the Switch Pro stuff. And that's cool, you know, I, I get it. But, you know, watch the whole video, man. I have, I have a lot of interesting thoughts on other things. But basically, this Xbox Live Gold situation was on Friday. Xbox decided to have the great idea of doubling the price of Xbox Live Gold from $60 a year to $120 a year. And they really thought that they were going to get away with this situation. Now, of course, there was a lot of negative feedback to towards this kind of like well, what what are you thinking what the hell are you doing right now and of course Microsoft recanted on this changed the price back to how it was and then actually included the free online multiplayer games such as Fortnite to be accessible without having an Xbox Live Gold account because beforehand you needed to have an Xbox Live account in order to play these games online even though they were free to play games essentially behind a paywall which was obviously not something that the other companies were doing you don't have to have a Nintendo Switch online account or a PS PSN account to play something like Fortnite or anything like that. It's just to access multiplayer based games on these systems. So now people are like all over the place with this situation. And I've seen so many weird things with it. And I just want to briefly clarify some things that I feel are going on with this. First off, a lot of people are saying, well, this was, you know, this sort of caught Xbox by surprise. This necessarily wasn't the higher ups ordering this stuff. It was probably someone in middle management and they didn't know, which is absolutely ridiculous to even think that that is the possibility of this situation everything goes through a funnel of events everything goes through a channel of different people so philly spencer good old slick philly definitely had to sign off on this i think there is in no way shape or form that he was not aware of the fact that they were going to be raising the price of xbox gold live which realistically should just be phased out in the first place i feel like most people are using game pass and game pass ultimate to where everything is encompassed into one where you're getting a bit of a better value because let's be realistic here the Xbox Live Gold games, the free games that you get every month, for the past like year or so, they've just kind of sucked. Like there's nothing been really huge or really a value when you are getting these free games. Sure, it's nice to get free games, but it's not like they're huge experiences that you have to get Xbox Live Gold in order to get these games. Usually they're cheaper games or just random games or things like that. So to sort of, you know, just give Slick Philly a pass with this, I think is just absolutely ridiculous because of the fact that, like I said, this had to go through a channel of different people so everyone in Xbox knew that they were doing this they just wanted to see the feedback of course people were very boisterous about this and these are the only people that should be praised in this situation are the people who spoke out about it and said you know what this is ridiculous this doesn't need to happen there's no additional value here doubling the price of Xbox Live Gold is just absolutely ridiculous and then Microsoft of course came out and like I said they made all the free to play games actually free to play no longer behind a paywall and because of this people are now praising Microsoft as being like pro consumer for listening to fan feedback stop that that is absolutely ridiculous that is like somebody breaking into your house and putting a gun to your head and then saying you know what I could kill you but I'm not going to and then praising the person who is broken into your house and put that gun to your head for not killing you Microsoft is the company that created this situation Microsoft is the company that created this problem with the Xbox Live Gold and then people spoke out about it so Microsoft had to recant on it and backpedal on this situation without that outspokenness of people microsoft would have just went through with this because these companies don't care about you they care about money and that's why i think the whole pro consumer anti-consumer arguments that we see so often are just stupid in my opinion because at the end of the day all these companies want is money they want your money they want to get your money however they can get your money and sure they might look better than other companies at times as far as greed is concerned but all of these companies are built on greed if shareholders 
shareholders weren't being alerted of this if shareholders didn't see things like people being very upset with microsoft nothing would have happened so do not praise microsoft for stepping back on this situation do not praise microsoft for allowing free to play games to actually be free to play on the xbox branded systems praise the people who talked about it praise the people who were outspoken about it and alerted microsoft that say hey we're not going to stand for this and we're not going to do this sort of situation stop 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 praising the robber praise the people who stopped the robber and finally a nintendo switch pro or a nintendo switch revision obviously is a very very hot topic especially amongst fans of nintendo some people feel that nintendo isn't going to do a nintendo switch revision some people feel that they are going to do a nintendo switch revision i'm definitely in the camp of a nintendo switch pro or a nintendo switch revision i think we're going to see it in 2021 there's a lot of signs that point to it nintendo has obviously been doing things behind the scene as well there was that whole data mine for the nintendo switch pro as well so where there's smoke there's fire with this and i definitely think we're going to see something but there are people that feel on the opposite side of the coin and i mean i can't really blame you it is nintendo they are a bit unpredictable but when it comes to the nintendo switch pro we've been seeing more and more people being a little bit outspoken about this and in a recent interview with nintendo everything which i will have a link to in the description box down below engine software who is the company that ported no more heroes one and no more heroes two to the nintendo switch last year actually was asked about a nintendo switch pro revision and they actually said some very interesting things now before we even get into what they said i do want to mention that they essentially took no more heroes one and no more heroes two the wii versions of these games not the remastered versions of these games that came out on the playstation 3 and essentially made them from 30 frames a second to 60 frames per second making a much smoother experience when playing these games so i sort of want to keep that in mind when getting into their statement because it sort of plays into their statement but when asked about the nintendo switch pro the person from engine software said the following truth be told our opinion on this might be counterintuitive for a lot of people but we are not large subscribers of the pro model Sure, it would be nice to have more RAM or a faster GPU or CPU compared to before, but if it is still considered the same platform, you must make sure your game runs on every model. So for compatibility reasons, your performance gets benchmarks for the lower specifications. We've seen the prior upgraded systems that the additional power never really got utilized well for this reason. Now, first off, I do want to say I think it's interesting that they even sort of fielded this question in the way that they did because they seem to be very open about this situation, whereas a lot of companies would probably just say, oh, you know, we've heard the rumors. We don't really have much to say about this. So the fact that they even decided to speak about this, I think, is very interesting. But obviously, the more interesting part here is what they said about the additional RAM or the CPU and the GPU being uh, beefed up and essentially how the system wouldn't realize its full potential if it is still within a Nintendo Switch family of systems. And I just find that very interesting because of the fact that you just did those Wii games. You just take these Wii games that were on the Wii, which was, you know, a more bottleneck system, and you brought them over to the Nintendo Switch and you made them 60 frames per second. So obviously you do realize that this additional power would allow for things like this. Sure, you do have to make sure your game runs on the benchmark lowest system, but I think that's what everyone is expecting with this system. When you look at things like the PlayStation 4, Pro or the Xbox One X. These systems took these same base games and they did it for several years on these platforms and then just enhanced them for the more powerful systems to scale them with things like, of course, the fact that you would have better frame rates and potentially better resolutions, making for a better experience on these platforms. That's sort of the whole point of the Nintendo Switch Pro, I feel. The Nintendo Switch is starting to show its age a bit, especially in games like Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, where you could have some major major slowdown going here so i think that's right in line with what we want to see now i'm not a game developer or anything like that so i don't know how hard it is to make a game run on an upgraded model versus a standard base model but considering how many smaller companies we even saw take advantage of things like the playstation 4 pro and the xbox one x and make more beautiful experiences make higher resolution experiences better frames per second experiences i think it's obviously something that isn't all that very difficult especially if the system is selling well because I feel like a Nintendo Switch Pro an upgraded Nintendo Switch model would probably sell better than something like the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro did because those were incremental upgrades for a system that was already doing things like 1080p 60 frames per second whereas the Switch could definitely use a boost as far as using that as a baseline so I just thought it was very interesting that engine software even fielded this question and then gave so much sort of insight into it I 
think we're going to see more and more companies talking about a Nintendo Switch Pro model in 2021, and I definitely think we're going to see one, but maybe you're on the other side of the fence. If you are, let me know in the comments down below. All right, so that is going to do it for today's video. There were some other things that were happening. A NASCAR game was announced for the Nintendo Switch, and let me let me tell you guys a little bit about my, my NASCAR experiences. So I remember I had NASCAR 98 on the Sega Saturn, and it had that Molly Hatch song, I'm driving down the road, I'm flirting with disaster. Like, that song was a banger. And like, I didn't even like Southern Rock at that time, but that sort of introduced me to Southern Rock. But I actually went to a NASCAR event with my dad and one of his buddies um, because he got free tickets tickets to it when we moved to North Carolina and all I really remember was there was a lot of angry drunk rednecks there I peed on a wall it was like a wall and then there was like a grate in the bottom of it and then there was a big fight in the parking lot after the event so yeah NASCAR coming to the Nintendo Switch that, that's pretty cool let me know in the comment section down below though what you think of everything what do you think about this Xbox situation the Nintendo Switch Pro is it coming in 2021 what do you think about what engine software said and as always guys thank you for checking out this video like I said at the start if you are new to the channel make sure you subscribe to the channel make sure you hit that like button as well go watch some other videos on the channel spend the day with rgt i mean you, you might not have anything better to do until wrestling comes on tonight and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later